Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And recently we had even more class tuning within Dragonflight. After monitoring how our classes have been performing so far within 10 to 5, the thought that a few playstyles still could use a bit of an improvement. And a ton of non-meta classes such as Frost Death Knights, Feral Druids, Survival Hunters, Arms Warriors, and many others saw additional buffs this week. Some big and some small. But only a few of these class specs made any serious gains earlier from this week. Today I wanted to go over some of the biggest winners of that tuning pass that might be worth leveling or picking up sometime in the future, especially if you're looking to get into some alts or think it's time for a fresh new main to spice things up a bit. But right before we go over the classes that made some of the biggest gains, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight 10.2 or any of the future updates going forward. One of the few classes that saw absolutely monstrous gains has been the Retribution Paladin, which have been slowly seen a buildup of popularity over the last few weeks. However, this week Retribution Paladin's numbers exploded when it comes to endgame content. As of the most recent weekly reset, Paladin saw damage increases to single target abilities such as Blades of Justice, Templar's Verdict, as well as a raw buff to the ability of Wake of Ashes and its two supporting talent options. Since then, we've seen an absolute explosion of Retribution Paladins in all facets of endgame progression, but we do see a notable uptick of Retribution Paladins specifically in Mythic Plus content where Paladins tend to be one of the better performing classes, especially when it comes to the raw group utility that they bring. For instance, they can easily deal with certain unique affixes, such as crowd controlling incorporeal ghosts with repentance or turn evil, as well as cleansing and healing afflicted souls with lay on hands, or a hand of freedom to prevent allies from being entrapped by entangling. And they can even use blessing or protection to help allies immune certain physical damage attacks or even stunts, which helps bypass certain rough boss mechanics entirely. Think of abilities such as that root stun that the Soul Goliath does in the Waycrest manner. To give you an idea of just how big this Paladin buff was, currently, at least for now, Retribution Paladin is one of the best simming classes, at least on paper. Now, while sims don't always equal reality, since sims don't account for mobility, boss mechanics, and plenty of other factors that are present in various dungeon and raid encounters within Season 3, it does at least show us that the Paladin's buff, which results in a roughly 5 or almost 6% single target damage increase, does put him way ahead of some of the other classes. Which I think also helps with the perception that the community has Retribution Paladins, which aren't always seen in the best light ever, but the amount of damage they're putting out in dungeons right now is definitely going to be turning some heads. To some extent, Retribution Paladins have almost become a staple of most endgame Mythic Plus progression groups. It seems that a lot of the high-end dungeons are being done with at least one Retribution Paladin and one Mage to fill the two DPS slots to account for all the boss mechanics as well as group utility. But the final choice being something interchangeable like a rogue or a demon hunter, one of the more popular choices, or even some off-brand spec that's starting to slowly make its way up the ladder with an M plus content. Overall, this tells us the Retribution Paladin is in a pretty good spot as of this moment. So any of you that are Paladin mains that have been waiting for your time to shine, now would be the perfect time to pick up a Red Paladin if you're looking to get into endgame content. Another class spec that saw a bit of a boom when it comes to its overall popularity has been the Holy Priest, which saw a few different gains in this most recent set of class tunings, where we have direct single target as well as AoE healing increases, which does allow Holy Priest to have much better throughput when it comes to their healing cooldowns. I've been gearing my rogue since the launch of season 3, and by this point the rogue is basically sitting in best of slot gear. This gives me a lot more time to play my alts and experiment with a variety of different builds and playstyles. And I've been spending a lot more time playing healers as of recently since Mystery Room Monk has become really really good, Discipline Priest has been in a really top shape, Restoration Druid is also very very fun. But now I've been able to compare Holy Priest as well as some of the other healers as well against one another and I would say that comparatively, Holy Priest feel very very strong, specifically when it comes to reacting to outgoing group wide damage. It's especially more noticeable when it's surprising damage, the stuff you don't really expect. 
What I noticed with just about every other healer is it feels like you need to prepare for outgoing damage ahead of time. Whether it is Discipline Priest with your Atonements and your damage buffs, Preservation Evoker with your Echoes, Residue with your Hearts, or even as a Monk to spread your Renewing and Enveloping Mists out ahead of time to deal with it efficiently and effectively. And it feels like Holy Priest is able to deal with that damage reactively and be just as effective because of just how strong some of the cooldowns are. Overall, this makes him for a much, much better healer for players that are new to endgame progression, that want to pick up a healer, that want something that's reliable, but want to be able to react to playstyles and mechanics that they may not be familiar with. And I feel like right now, Holy Priest is in a pretty good spot to be that perfect healer. Besides healing increases, we also did see single target damage buffs for Holy Priest as well. This doesn't really impact them in content like Mythic Plus specifically, where quite a bit of their damage comes from other sources, but this will mean better single target damage against boss encounters. Overall, this simply means that Holy Priests are going to be a little bit more impactful when it comes to overall group damage, especially during the downtime when no healing needs to go out. So we have seen some logs recently where Holy Priests are able to utilize DPS trinkets and as many DPS talents as possible to maximize their single target and AoE damage and they can actually be a bit of a powerhouse if you put enough effort into them. Another healer that saw buffs as of this reset was the Restoration Shaman. Though when it comes to healing, they saw a measly 5% healing increase. However, when it comes to their damage output of abilities such as Lava Burst, Flame Shock, and Lightning Bolt, all of those spells got buffed by 20%, which is quite a sizable single target increase for Restoration Shamans specifically. This means we kind of have a resurgence of a Battle Shaman playstyle, which is a spec of Restoration which was coined back in Battle for Azeroth expansion. A Battle Shaman was a Restoration Shaman which brought in the same utilities of Restoration, such as their Healing Tide Totem, Spirit Link Totem, the APT Battle Rest Totem, as well as Tremor and other Utility Totems, but mostly focused on doing as much damage as humanly possible. Essentially, they were like a downgraded version of an Elemental Shaman that still brought some of the more unique totems and mechanics that only a Restoration Shaman can provide in raids or even in dungeons. And to some degree, we still have that available for Restoration specifically, as the amount of utility that a Shaman brings, no matter as Enhancement, Elemental or Restoration, is actually quite good and can deal rather well with unique encounter mechanics or most of the other dungeon specific factors. And you still do bring those restoration specific totems like Tide as well as Spirit Link, even though those are not nearly as necessary or a must have in raid content, they can be still useful in smaller dungeon content, where you can still leverage a lot of this additional single target damage output with the right tank in the right composition. I guess what I'm trying to say is, right now restoration shamans aren't looking like a universally strong healer. We still are going to see plenty of mystery or monks and discipline priests towards the top ranks of M plus specifically, but we have been able to observe restoration shamans popping up here and there, specifically paired together with tanks such as Vengeance Demon Hunters and Projection Paladins. Which does mean restoration actually has a little bit of room to stand in the spotlight. Granted, you might be a little comp specific, it is a very fun healer to get into, with a fantastic mastery that helps you really top your allies off the lower their health is, which helps you almost always feel quite reliable in some of the more dangerous encounters. And the additional damage allows you to really explore that battle shaman playstyle once again, especially if you used to play that playstyle before or simply enjoy feeling impactful even during healing downtimes. Another class spec that we saw getting a little bit more play in some of the more difficult end game content has been the Shadow Priest, which is actually quite a pumper of a class. Shadow Priest saw a slight single target damage increase with this newest set of class tuning, as well as a fairly sizable AoE and cleave damage increase also. Because Shadow Priests cleave their enemy targets through the mechanic of Psychic Link, where every single target infected by Vampiric Touch will always take a portion of whatever single target damage you put out, buffing their single target damage results in even better cleave and AoE damage output. Now, Shadow Priests do have quite a bit of ramp up that they need to establish first before they can really get a lot of the damage going, and spreading DOS to multiple targets isn't as easy since Shadow Crash does have a 8 target cap, the rest of them have to be done manually. But once that's done, you pop Power Infusion on an ally, pop all of your cooldowns, and it becomes a very, very fun class to play, and it feels extremely good to use in dungeons. Just generally speaking, any situation where you can hit more than one target as a Shadow Priest is perfect. 
and I've been giving this back a little bit of time since their dominance in season two. But playing it again, giving it another go, switching it up instead of going mind spike to the mind flay, it actually feels really, really good to pick up yet again. You also do feel kind of instant casty thanks to their season 3 tier set, which at first didn't really sit well with a lot of players in the Shadow Priest community, at least when you compare it to their previous tier set bonuses, but the ability of Shadow Ward Death does reset quite often, especially thanks to the talent of Death Speaker, which gives you a bit more movement in between your cast ability rotations. You aren't really going to be as mobile as a mage, rogue, or a demon hunter, but giving you ability to move in between of casts is actually quite big on a class that can feel somewhat immobile. Shadow Priests, like every other priest, also have quite a bit of decent utility, with abilities such as Master Spell, even yes, the nerfed version of it, Silence, Vampiric Touch, Group Healing, Magic Dispels, and Disease Removals. Though none of these skills are really unique to Shadow Priests specifically, except for an odd Silence or two. Discipline Priest as well as Holy bring the same type of utility, which makes it that much harder to justify saving a dungeon spot for Shadow Priest specifically over any other priest. However, if you are playing into some of the newer classes and you bring a Restoration Shaman after the most recent buffs, or Rest of Druid or a Mystery or Monk into your composition over a Discipline Priest, that does open up a pretty good spot for a Shadow Priest to fill. And with how much raw damage they're able to put out as of this newest update, we've been able to see a lot more priests competing in some of the higher end content since this most recent generous set of balance tuning. And for now, this is going to be the entire list of classes I really wanted to highlight after this most recent set of class changes, which honestly I'm very, very happy to see. Especially when we see specs that are not really super represented or are that popular get a little bit of a buff and now they can find some form of a competitive ground. And I hope that we'll continue seeing those kind of tuning changes and maybe even additional class revamps that we've seen in previous updates heading into patches like 10 to 6 as well as the season 4 patch 10 to 7. So if you were looking to play something off meta, now might be your time to pick up Red Paladin, Holy Priest, Restoration Shaman or even a Shadow Priest going forward. I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching the video and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.